It's common for many people, especially when they're just starting out, to feel sore for a day or two after training. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger was feeling it soon after finishing his very first workout ever. In his book, Arnold, The Education of a Bodybuilder, he writes, quote, the guys warned me that I'd be sore, but it didn't seem to be having any effect. I thought I must be beyond that. The next morning, I couldn't even lift my arm to comb my hair. Each time I tried, pain shot through every muscle in my shoulder and arm. I couldn't hold the comb. I tried to drink coffee and spilled it all over the table. I was helpless. End quote. Most people think that sore muscles after a workout are a sign that you've stimulated growth and that more soreness equals faster results. But are the two really linked? Is muscle soreness a sign that you've had a good workout? Can you still build muscle without feeling sore? What causes delayed onset muscle soreness? Well, it has nothing to do with lactic acid or lactate. In fact, most of the lactate is gone from your muscles soon after exercise. A tough workout, or even just a single exercise that you haven't done before, leads to a bout of inflammation, the same defense mechanism that causes swelling and pain if you, say, cut your finger. Inflammation is the way that your body handles an injury, and as part of the repair and recovery process, your body ramps up the production of immune cells. These cells then produce substances that make certain nerve endings in your body more sensitive. When you move, these nerves send signals to the brain which then creates the perception of soreness. In fact, pain appears to be an output constructed by the brain, as opposed to an input to the brain, as we once believed. The nerve fibers that transmit pain are located mainly in the connective tissue found between muscle fibers, as well as the junction between the muscle and tendon. In other words, the source of the pain appears to be the connective tissue that helps to bind muscle fibers together, rather than the actual muscle fibers themselves. Does muscle damage mean muscle growth? It's often said that muscle growth is the result of muscle damage. According to one trainer, quote, building new muscle is all about damaging the fibers that you start with. It's your body's response to the muscle damage you inflict during a workout that leads to muscle growth, end quote. So blitz and bomb your muscles with lots of sets and you'll create an apocalyptic level of damage. The more damage you create, the better. As a result, the muscle will adapt by making itself bigger and stronger. You went to the gym yesterday. Today, your muscles feel sore. That must mean your workout was effective, right? Not necessarily. Bombing your muscles into submission seems like a highly effective way to train for hypertrophy, mainly because it leaves you feeling sore the next day. It feels like it's working. For many lifters, post-workout soreness and discomfort is a source of pride. No pain, no gain, and all that. The more discomfort you're in while walking down the stairs, the better. However, there's a surprising lack of research to show that an increase in muscle damage leads to a corresponding increase in muscle growth. Exercise can cause damage to muscle fibers, but there's very little evidence to show that muscle damage is a requirement for muscle growth. Comparing high versus low soreness strength training programs. Brazilian researchers have shown that both high and low soreness programs lead to similar gains in muscle strength and size. They compared training a muscle once a week with a full body workout performed five times a week, Monday through Friday. Both groups did the same exercises and the same number of sets, with one key difference. The once a week group did two exercises per workout for five to 10 sets per exercise, while the full body group did 11 exercises for one to two sets per exercise. Both groups did 8 to 12 reps in each set. Subjects in the group that hit each muscle group once a week reported a much higher level of post-exercise muscle soreness. However, the researchers found no significant differences in terms of strength or size gains between the two groups. In other words, both the low soreness and high soreness training programs increased muscle mass and strength in similar ways. Here's how one group of researchers summarized the results of a study designed to test the theory that detectable damage is a necessary precursor for muscle growth. Quote, One group of participants experienced an initial bout of damaging exercise, and the other had no detrimental symptoms of damage. Despite the different initial conditions, both groups experienced the same net increase in muscle size and strength. These results suggest that it is the total work done during training that impacts the final muscle remodeling, 
apparently independent of an initial triggering event. End quote. That said, while muscle damage isn't a requirement for growth, it may accelerate the process. It's also possible that muscle damage may become a much more important stimulus for growth the longer you've been training. But even then, more damage won't automatically mean faster growth. If it does exist, any dose-response relationship between muscle damage and muscle growth is likely to be shaped like an inverted U, with a sweet spot found somewhere between too much and not enough damage. Put differently, there's going to be an optimal amount of damage above and below which your gains will be compromised. This sweet spot may very well be a moving target and will shift around depending on a number of factors, including how frequently you're working each muscle group, your training volume, as well as the exercises you're doing. Why do muscles get sore? Hear that on tomorrow's episode.